Happy Wednesday, everyone. Welcome to the I'm to be a show live. I'm Ian Borja. with me as always, dear, dear friend, Tim Cash. And our guest today, uh, Harvey Guillen stars yeah. in what we do in the shadows on FX. We always talk about the names right before and I'm practicing it. And then when we go live, I have to make sure I get it right. It's Harvey, always Tim, the way. Yeah. How's it going? <laughs> I'm, I'm great. Thanks. You actually got it. You pronounced my last name. He did. Are yeah. you wearing pants today? I am pants. It is a pants day up here. In Sometimes Seattle. he doesn't. Oh, yes. and because it cuts off, he's just in his boxer shorts. That's smart. Yeah. IMDb boxer shorts. That's, yes, that's so it's good. Yeah. yeah. So it is on brand. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> for everyone who is just watching, again, what we do in the shadows is a TV uh, remake, reimagining of the hilarious mockumentary uh, created by Taika Waititi and Jermaine Clement of uh, Flight of the Concords about vampires just living in our world and the show premieres tonight on fx i've had the pleasure to watch a couple episodes absolutely hilarious tim what are, what are your quick thoughts on the show my quick thoughts on his show while he's sitting next to me yeah like i remember actually seeing the original movie uh, as a lot of people did not knowing what i was going into and thoroughly loving it it was my first kind of, um, I'd never seen anything like that before. Yeah. It was my first kind of sampling. I never actually watched Flight of the Concords or anything like that. So it was my mm. first kind of sampling of Jermaine Clement and Taika Waititi. Loved it. Very happy when I heard that there's a TV show. You can't miss it in LA. The billboards. It's everywhere. It's literally everywhere. My mouth is all um, over LA. That's I, not the first time I've heard that. <laughs> So. Uh, I crush you. Weirdly enough, your reputation precedes you. Um, <laughs> and the, the thing is, uh, you know, I went and sat through four episodes last night. And this is fun perfect duration you know it's coming yeah. up under like mm -hmm. 30 minutes yeah so you're just banging through great cast uh, amazing guest stars uh, and just really beautifully put together and funny uh, and you really are a standout character tell us about uh the show for anyone that has never seen it before give us a storyline and tell us about guillermo yeah so if you've never seen what we do in the shadows you've been living under a rock and or in um, a coffin or a coffin um no well actually that's not true because i hadn't seen the movie when i auditioned for this <laughs> oh okay. it's kind of funny it was on cue to watch on my amazon and i was like mm, and people have been you have to watch it it's a mockumentary style i love mockumentary i had just done something that was similar to mockumentary style so i was like okay i gotta watch this and i was sitting at home about to watch it and i got a text from a friend who said hey i'm having a wine and cheese night and I was like, wine and cheese night, mockumentary, wine and cheese night, mockumentary. So I took the wine and cheese night. And <laughs> I went to wine and cheese night. And I met this girl there uh, who texted me the next day. And she said, you should audition for my fiance's new show, What We Do in the Shadows. Huh. And I was like, mm, I don't do those kind of films anymore. Right? <laughs> They're illegal. <laughs> and she was like, no, I'm serious. You should really do so it. So judgy of you. Yeah. yeah. And I was <laughs> like, first of all, you know, how dare you assume that I do those anymore? Um, mm -hmm. And she said, no, I'm serious. You should audition for this. And I, I, I took the bait. And then the next thing you know, I, I went into Allison Jones casting and she cast everything under the sun, you know, the office and bridesmaid, everything. So I was like, I'm to meet her. And I went in and I didn't meet her because <laughs> I got right. in and she was in London auditioning for my role. Uh -huh. And I was like, well, I need to get this role. Um, and I remember just auditioning and just one of those things as an actor, you walk away and you're like, what did I do? Like, I don't remember what I fucking did. <laughs> like, I just mm -hmm. don't remember what I did. And then my my agent was like, what, how did you do? And I was like, I don't know. I don't remember what I had. And four hours later, they had called and said that, um, that I was going to test for it. Like, I was going to test. The, the, the lady who invited you to Wine and Cheese Night, what do you think she saw in you? And was it immediately, was she like, you have to go read for Guillermo? Yeah, she okay. like I think she just saw me. I don't know what it was. Maybe I was the only like Mexican person at the party or something. She was just like, <laughs> "You're Mexican. This guy is Mexican. Guillermo, that's you." <laughs> um, no, she actually. Uh, we weren't talking about the business, so we were right. talking like just everyday life. You're always talking and, about the business. No, people. but <laughs> yeah. it's funny because we really weren't like we were, I think we were talking about like politics or something, okay. and I was just talking you know whatever like and she just texted me and she said hey i think you're so funny from yesterday and i was like thanks you should get you know keep in touch but she her name is yvonne and her fiance is garrett bash who's the executive producer on the show okay and she's the nicest person and so just like i think she just got the energy she was like i think you could play this but you know he is older in the script he was 20 years older than i am yeah and so when i read for it i was like oh, i think i'm too young for the role but i'll go in and i'll make myself look older and i thought looking older was parting my hair in the middle and doing like swirls and then wearing <laughs> harry potter glasses mm -hmm. do you have a picture popping. of this hairdo I do yeah, actually. I do have a picture. Uh, I have a picture uh, uh, saved actually on my phone of the day I auditioned. Okay. And if you put that picture next to the pictures from Guillermo, mm -hmm. they're the exact same. Exact thing. same. Because really? I remember, okay. yeah, because I remember when we got to set on the pilot, Taika was like, mm, Javi, what you wear for the audition? And I was like, oh, yeah, I wore this nasty sweater vest. And I turned to look older with these glasses. But you're not going to, yeah, that. 
That's it. Like, that's it. And I was like, yeah, styling what? what? Too. And I literally came in as a character. And if you took a picture from the day I auditioned, I took. I remember taking a picture from the day we're on set. It's the same. Tell us about your character, Guillermo. Who is he? So Guillermo de la Cruz is uh, Nander's uh, familiar. So his um, right hand man, best friend, if you will, or for lack of a better word, a slave. Uh, so he has to do everything um, for him. Uh, provide, you know clean the house or provide victims or do windows or provide victims and you know mundane stuff that we don't like to do every day so that's his job and hopes that he becomes a vampire well that's his one drive right is that one day nando uh bites him and turns him into a vampire yeah. is all he wants it's the carrot in front yeah. of the rabbit and right. you're always just dangling in front and you're doing whatever it takes and i think everyone can relate to guillermo because we've all been there whether it's like a business or a relationship we're in something that we're just hoping it's going to get better it's yeah. going to get better it's going to get better it's i'm sometimes. in it right now <laughs> <laughs> i'm hoping right now yeah. um and it just sometimes doesn't happen or you have to find a different avenue so sometimes you're just like it's not happening for me the way it's supposed to happen but you know what different route so we'll see what happens well, this season you know what before we keep going to this I, we always forget to do this we have the full trailer here so let's just queue up that trailer uh get people a glimpse as to what what we do in the shadows is all about and we'll keep going on this yeah cool it's nightfall he awakened Very cool, Master. Very scary. Thank you. Nadja, Laszlo! Yeah. Yes? Can you come downstairs for a second, please? The problems with living with other vampires are the vampires I have chosen to stay with. I wanted to talk about general hygiene in the set. Ooh. Last night, there were all these people down there, half drunk. Or well, where did they find the alcohol? No, they were half drunk. They've been half drunk. If you've got something to say, then damn well say it. It's not hygienic! Nandor is like a big turkey. Cannot pay with that. I'm so sorry. So you can be throwing ancient coins at me. Yeah, Mom, stab this fine. man. Guillermo is my familiar. I'm not a killer. I find people who are easy to kill. Are you virgins? I don't see how that's relevant. Oh, I'm killing it, baby. Oh, that's werewolf piss. Two werewolves. Colleen, what are you doing in here? This is my bedroom. My name is Colin Robinson. Hi, Deb. And I am a energy vampire. We either bore you with a long conversation. Hey, Don. Or... Don. We enrage you. Something terrible is coming! <laughs> Master, this is pretty macabre. <laughs> Caught in the door. We'll yank it out. Fuck. Excellent, uh, excellent. So, I got a chance again. We got to watch the uh, first four episodes, and I'm going to say this, and I'll put my stake in the ground. Pun intended. I think it's actually funnier than the original film. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I was screening them here, watching them, and uh, laughing audibly out loud to like every couple minutes there is like hilarious bits in there so that that is my sign off uh of the show so um what that's was it a like that's a wrap that's a wrap <laughs> thanks very much ladies and gentlemen uh and so i'm from what i understand you guys did a lot of improv on the set correct yeah um, no we did uh i mean the scripts are already so funny and well written we have amazing writers um you know um just Stephanie Robinson, like we have so many amazing writers that the script itself is so good that we got to do the version of the script and then Taika or Jermaine were just like, and do one with your version. And it's like, what? And you don't get that as an actor most of the time. Usually it's like, you know, script supervisors like, um, it's the cats went out, not the cat went right. out. Right. And you're like, oh, okay, sorry, you know. Sorry, Chris. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, God. Um, but it was the first time that as an actor, you're like, wow, you got to go to set and you're already excited just what's on the script. And then they're like, do another one and just do whatever you want. Well, I actually, I'd read that when they did, when we do, in, uh, what we do in the shadows, the movie, that Taika um, and Jermaine had had a script that they actually did not share actors, yeah. with any actor or even cast and crew. Yeah. So that, did you know this? So that they could just get an, a, kind of like a, a organic, an organic like, yeah. just take Well, they it. tell you what you're, like what the scene's about. They tell mm -hmm. you where you're going from A to B to C, you know, so they're like, we have to get out of the scene by, we have to get out to go to the store or whatever. 
and then fill in the blanks, you know? So that's what the great thing about the script, it's already there. You know what the story is. So then how would Guillermo, how would Nandor, how would the, the characters say those words, maybe just slightly different in the way that it comes organic and natural to them. And for the most part, when I look at the trailers or look at the episodes, I've seen the first four as well. And it's just, you never know what's going to make it because we have so many hours of footage, just so many. We did one take where the, it was two page scene, just two pages. Mm -hmm. It should have taken, you know, a couple of minutes to shoot. It, it was 28 minutes of nonstop improv. Just wow. we had a whole episode on one like two page scene and we're, we're never going to show this like it's never going to make. But I feel really confident that you're going to enjoy the extras that come out <laughs> with the DVDs because we're going to have hundreds of hours of just bloopers and footage that will never make the cut. Oh my God, that's unreal. Uh, and so you work very closely with Kayvon Novak, who plays uh, the character of Nando. You said he's you're his familiar. So his uh, human human servant or some sort. Yeah, um, familiar. Yeah. Yeah, fam yeah, familiar, right? I'm right. familiar so, with the familiar, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, right from the get-go, you guys have some pretty hilarious chemistry uh, in the trailer. It shows you doing, like, the opening the casket and you're shopping and stuff for him. So what was your relationship like uh, on set? Had you known him before? Was this your first time? No, that's so funny. I never met Kayvon. I never met him at all. I got to set after I booked it. So after I was supposed to test. We never tested together. Uh, I was supposed to test for the show and I was on hold to find out what date I was going to test. And one day I was just getting irritated. I was like, oh, it's been two weeks. I haven't heard anything. When am I going to find out? And my phone kept ringing from a 16 digit number. And I was like, oh, give me a sign. God, any sign. And this phone would keep ringing. I ignored it. I was like, ah, shut Why would up. you ignore the phone when you're because waiting? Because I didn't know. <laughs> it's not a, like I was waiting for a three, two, you know, like oh, right, right, right. <laughs> eight, one, eight or like whatever. A like I was like 18 digit number. That's yeah. the telemarket. I'm not opening that. And it was uh, Taika and Jermaine who've been trying to get a hold of me. And was like, is this hot? And I was like, yeah, hey, it's Taika and Jane. And, uh, and I was like, hello. And they're like, yeah, you auditioned for us and you're the mate. And I was like, what? I, I am, uh, yeah, I'm going to test. I, when is the test? No, there's no test. You you're, got it. You got it. Yeah. And I was like, what? And my sister was in the car and she's a big Thor fan. And so she was like, oh my God. <laughs> like screaming. And I was like, shh, I'm on the phone with Taika. And then uh, I was like, I was uh, I was on set within like 48 hours. They had announced it the next day on like a deadline, and like it was crazy. It was like yeah, but I never met Kayvon. And when I met, I was like, <gasps> I hope we, you know we have this chemistry. And he's the most generous like comedian I've ever met. He's like, English, he's and he's English, yeah. yeah. And he's so nice, and just uh, we just riff off each other so well that I was like, wow, this could have gone terribly wrong. <laughs> you know, we've never right. met in person. But also, you have to give credit to the producers and and, and the to guy, the casting right. director and like the writing there makes it seamless. You know, because. We could have been like, I'm not going out when I'm meshing with this guy. But he just texted me this morning. He's doing ADR for like episode eight or something uh -huh. in London. And he just texted me and he sent me a picture of uh, us together on the screen because they show you the, the footage that you're right. going to do ADR for. And like an hour ago, he's like, hey, it's the day of the premiere. And so he has to wait like a day before it premieres there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a, I think the great thing about the show is it's a mockumentary, right? So the, the premise of it is a, a camera crew is doing a mockumentary, a documentary on a bunch of vampires and their lives. Vampires, we know, are magical creatures. They can transform into bats and they can fly and they can like, right. they battle with werewolves. Um, on the show, you know, we're used to seeing vampires, like even if you watch Twilight or, you know, Bram Stoker's Dracula, great uh, high production value in the transformations and stuff. What I find very funny about this show is you clearly have a big budget, but you choose not to use it for and certain things right? <laughs> right when you see that when you see the vampires flying you visibly just... see the wires so there's a joke <laughs> behind it which i thought I, I, they're meant you're meant to see it you're meant um, to see behind well i think that the one that they sent out the four episodes some of them are not done ah! <laughs> <laughs> hey hey don't throw us under the bus we uh we have a budget for it wait what i mean uh, is but i quite like the fact that i think it's funny pitch. yeah that's funny it, I mean, it's just fun. the way they fly is like it's like they're corny it's like they, they kind of float yeah. up like that and they're like right. dangling outside of buildings i know it it, it, it yeah, makes yeah. it very you charming could, right? um, i think it's uh intentional that way yeah but uh the version that we that we both saw is like the unfinished one so there's oh, one area okay, okay, okay. so there's um i think there's like a disclaimer like wires still right, attached right, right. or whatever. So some people were like, wow, it's so funny you guys kept the wires. And it's like, no, 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 it said right there. You see, just... here's the thing. I yeah. thought it was funny. I it, it is hilarious. But also, even if you take the wires out, the way that you see the bodies rise sometimes, like oh, I know when cool. I'm flying, it's because like, like, it's like, like, you know, it's yeah. mass going up and it's just very natural that I'm not just floating on air. Like I think when I fly, I'm like, <laughs> Uh, you, you, had that, you had that Clark Kent, Lewis Lane. Yeah, moment. and I'm like literally like, it looks natural. I'm flying. See? <laughs> Ow. You know, because it's like your groin is just being pulled up. And it just, it doesn't, you know, you're not like 
Kathy Rigby, you know, like Peter Pan, like yeah, yeah. Where just like, I'm just flying, it's effortless. Like, I feel like when I first did it, I was so excited for it, but didn't know how much work goes into it. Cause like, here we go, Harvey, up. Mm, and you just like, <laughs> it just doesn't look As natural. an actor, what's the difference? I mean, obviously, we'll, we'll talk about this in a second, like where you came from, where you studied and all of that. But as an actor, it must be very different to be filming for a show that has a fake camera crew filming you at all times because aren't you taught always don't no, look at the, the camera, camera. Yeah. so what's the difference there in the, uh, the i have to be directed to because guillermo is you know the eyes and ears the of the audience yeah. he's the only human so whenever uh there's any kind of like emotion or there's a reaction where something's like oh my god you roll your eyes up the camera goes to guillermo mm -hmm. because he's reacting the way you're reacting because remember these are vampires are creatures you know they yeah. completely like live in their own world so like it's the human who brings that like um you know the credit card and, scene yeah the credit yeah. card scene all that yeah. so for me it was um i'm never looking at the camera so taco would be like and javi give it you know and i was like oh got it because it is very much the camera is always there but you're, you're trained to never look at the camera right. the camera's not there you're not breaking the fourth wall and this is the first time where you're like yep the, you know the camera's there so technically you be, the, the camera becomes a character and so your wink to the camera is just another character on the show because literally you're just having a moment with the camera right yeah so it's very cool Something about this cast and the show that I love so much is that every single person is wildly, wildly funny and hilarious. So I have the cast list pulled up right now so uh, people in, in the chat can see it. So we have Kayvon Novak, uh, you obviously, Natasha Dimitrio, Matt Berry, Mark Prokish, uh, Beanie Feldstein, who is so, so good also. Um, do, uh, one of my favorite characters is actually Mark Prokish, who is the uh, the energy vampire um, in particular, the scene where you guys go to the city council, I think was like particularly very funny. Um, so what's it like when you're kind of vibing with the five people? Obviously, you're working very closely with Nando. Um, but what's it like when you guys have to riff off five people in one room, you know, or in one sequence? Well, I mean, like you said, like these guys are like professionals and they're all hilarious. So like it, we can go on forever. It's mm -hmm. like playing hot potato with someone and no one drops it like ever. Like you're just passing it, passing it forever. They literally have to call for lunch break. And then come back and continue to pass it and pass it. So everyone's amazing. Matt Berry, like I mean, I work so closely with Kayvon that our chemistry has gone so nice. I know when he's gonna like give me something and how to I hold a beat to wait for his, you know, because I know he's not done, you know. Right. And so working that formula with everyone with Mark, I didn't have any scenes with him in the pilot, and we talked about this because we were the only uh, Americans in the show. Right. Right. So we shot the yeah. pilot and didn't have scenes with each other, and we were actually kept away from each other because we really didn't shoot with each other. So we were never, you know, spending time with each other or whatnot. So the set was perfect for that because he's an outsider where he's he drains your energy just because of the way he talked, and I'm an outsider because I'm the only human. Right. So for our characters, it actually worked perfect that we were we felt like outsiders during the pilot. We're like, hello, I'm here to do a pilot. Like it it felt so bizarre. But then after you get everyone's vibe and stuff, and by the time we moved to Toronto, everyone's like, you know, hanging out and whatnot so you get everyone's like quirks and and whatnot uh it was perfect it was the way it was supposed to be what do you get to do in a tv show that you can't do in a movie when i when it comes to telling a story you get to elongate a storyline you know you sometimes you have a two-hour cutoff for a movie and you, you have to be beginning middle and an end and with the series you have those 10 episodes and you have you know 30 minutes each episode to just add on every single so time. what are you how are you using that in this tv show in comparison to the original film well, the, everyone's stories uh, unravel as the show you know, goes on. We just see them blossom. And so we see things that we were expecting not come to fruition and things that we were not expecting pop up in our face. So with the movie, it's either like that's the payoff and that's the climax of the movie. We're like, ah, that was good. And that's the end. You know? <laughs> and with here, you're like, oh, I'm just checking in with the vampires, my weekly check-in. They're at the you know city council this week. Oh, that's funny. And then you're, that you're adding your sprinkling along the way to just set you up for like, this is a story. These are real vampires this is a real human who lives with them and this is what the outcome of that journey is for the first season right did you find that through the season you because taika and everyone has their idea of the script and let you guys really have ownership of did you find yourself really settling into your character and learning more about him organically through that method of directing yeah, I mean, Taika directed uh, the last two, okay. and uh, Jermaine directed the first two, um, and Taika directed the pilot with Jermaine, and we had other people direct the series as well, where they do it in blocks. Um, we actually had the the familiar Jackie from the movie, 
who played my role in the yeah, movie, huh? she directed two episodes. Okay. Yeah, oh. so it's kind of cool and surreal to have Jackie come in and then she's like, <gasps> she saw me, she gave this huge hug and she was so welcoming because, you know, we're in the same world, but different places right. at the same time, you know? So that took place, you know, in um, New Zealand and whatnot, and we're in Staten Island. So it's the same timeline, we're just in different parts of the world. Right. So when people are like, are they going to make an appearance? Are they going to blah? These characters, like, these characters have their own lives, you know? They're living their lives right now wherever that story took place in the werewolves, you know, swearwolves, um, they have their own lives going on too. So it's the the intertwining of this like universal life. <laughs> yeah. So there's another, like there's a, I forget the name of the exact show. You probably know it. The, the paranormal cops show they're yeah. doing in New Zealand also. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also a spinoff of what we do in the shadows. If I'm not mistaken, can you tell us, is there going to be any sort of tie in there or is that under lock and we key for now? We do have werewolves visit us. Okay. So we can say that. Uh, I think okay. if you see the promo, you see yeah. the werewolves. Um, but we do have, again, it's the same uh, ideas that you were introduced with the film, mm-hmm. but now we're just in Staten Island. And right. so it turns out, you know what? There are vampires everywhere, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Not just for one region there, of, the, of the world. There's they're a everywhere. really funny scene. It won't be a spoiler, but where they get to meet the werewolves. And they're like, they're like so are all werewolves Indian? Because of the Twilight scene. Yeah. And I, was, I, I was dying because that's so funny. He's like, well, I'm kind of half in him. But yeah, it's yeah. got nothing to do with yeah. the fact that I'm Which a werewolf. Which kind of plays on yeah. the whole thing of like where, you know, werewolves or vampires don't only exist in certain parts right. of the world. You know what I mean? Right. They're right. everywhere. We're everywhere, you guys. So, so right. there have been uh, questions in the chat about obviously working with Tyka and Jermaine. We're just talking about that a bit. So Tyka and Jermaine started this, I think, 14 years ago with their first short film. And then they made their feature length. And then this. Uh, so... What was it like to work with them with their, you know, baby they've been working? It's now a teenager of, of content and ideas that have been spinning for the show. Um, was it, you know, how were they on set when they got to see this grand vision fully realized and do it now a, a 10 episode season? Yeah, we had a conversation on set. I think I was talking to Jermaine or Taika about how they started with the short and they never saw it like, you know, the, the going, this far. going this far. Like it was they did the feature and that was already like, we're good, we're done. And he they always said this in interviews that they're they're like, we were done. We were done with it. And then to do to give the opportunity to have it, you know, come into T V and around the world into homes to be like a weekly series was such like a, a cool experience and blessing. Like they were like, Yeah, let's do it. And talking to them about it, it was like, wow, it's like you never know what's gonna like come from you like planting a seed, you know? You did a short film and then it becomes a feature and you think you're done and now it's a TV show. Like it's like you never know because and they're so creative like their minds are always just going like on set we would change so many things that they were like oh we didn't do that because in the show I remember in the movie we didn't do it this way or in the short we established that that doesn't happen so they kept to the rules that they established from the get-go 14 years ago from the short like they stood like they stood by what they the world they created like like no no no, because remember in the short we said and then in the film we said okay (laughs) that's pretty cool yeah what do you um you know you've acted in a ton of stuff uh, but you're still learning constantly. Yeah. You get the opportunity now to sit in a room with Taika Waititi. Uh, I'm, everyone will tell you I'm a big uh, you know, Marvel fan, so Thor Ragnarok's one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. uh, getting to sit in that room um, to work on a project that really was Taika's very early days project to working with him now where he's so established. What do you see in him that you're in admiration of, whether that be a work ethic or a personal thing? I think uh, I've hung out with him, you know, personally, and, like I've worked with him, and he's let that like, sink in for a let second. Sink by in the for way. Yeah. I went to his birthday party. Yeah, no, no but that's very cool. Um, he invited me personally, uh, but it's so cool because he is such a professional, and I admire that. I mean, his tenacity, like it's just like he has a drive to to make his vision come you know, realization to flourish in. And I really admire that as an artist because it's like, wow, you're like, you know what you want, you go and get it. Like, it's like, we'll have like sometimes like five minutes to get this last scene or whatnot for the day where we've been shooting 16 hour days. And we're like, oh, we still have this shot. We, we might have to move it to another day. And he's like, no, we can do it. And he gets the shot. Like he will get it done like at the last five minutes, uh, you know, it's the 11th hour and he gets it done and you're like, wow, anyone else I think would be like, we're cu- you know what, let's just call it a night, right. we'll pick it up tomorrow. No, not Taika. Like I said, like, no, we can do it. We can do it. The light's already set up. Blah, blah, turn the camera around. Da, da, da. Done. It's that indie vibe. Yeah, it's that indie vibe because you have to run on that like budget. You know, yep. you're always producing something on like an indie budget. It doesn't matter how many like, you know, paychecks you get. Like you're still thinking like, how do I make this as great as possible and quick as possible? And so I think I really appreciate that being a writer myself and having to produce stuff where you have no budget, having looking at him be like, wow, look what you've done with like nothing and made into this whole What empire. was the most helpful piece of advice that you and him have had through a conversation that to this day, uh, sings in the back of your head um for advice i would say 
mm. or just anything you've learned. Maybe not advice, just something that you said to you that you're like, okay, I'm done. Yeah, I'm, I'm I would have to say that. the most important thing is uh, stay with clear liquor. Yeah. Stay with clear liquor? Yeah. <laughs> yep. I actually, I know exactly where he's coming from. Yeah. So need. Stick to clear uh, liquor. Yeah. yeah. For those who are just joining, <laughs> this is the I'm DeVia Show Live. I'm Yunda Borja. With me, as always, Tim Cash, a special guest today, Harvey Guillen. We're talking about what we do in the shadows. Series premieres tonight on FX. Watch it. We've been talking about it for a little bit. Uh, we'll definitely come back to this, but let's jump a little bit into Harvey's career. Uh, we like to kick off talking about our guests' magnificent IMDb pages by having them guess. Uh, Harvey, do you happen to know how many IMDb credits you have listed? Oh, no, I do not. Nope, I do not. Nope. No rough guess? Wow, you've changed. I've changed. No. Um, well, does that include like pending everything, right? It's on so NBA. there are post production. There's post production stuff on here. Post production right stuff. Okay. Um, maybe rough 36? 45. 45. 45. Under underselling yourself. 45 acting credits. I'm underselling uh, myself. And we like to I ask or conveniently forgetting some past jobs. <laughs> Which one is it? Which and that one too. Is it? Can I talk to you guys later about removing some <laughs> things from there? Uh, we'd like to ask folks their first IMDb credit also. Uh, do you remember what yours is? Misguided. Okay, misguided. Yeah, exactly. Uh, can you that tell was us Judy about Judy Greer? Yes, Judy yeah. Greer, Chris Julie Ash uh, No, Judy Greer and Ashton Kutcher produced it. It was, uh, I played uh, a school blogger in high school. No, his it name? Was, uh, Lindsay Lopez. Yep. And wow. it was a, it was a take on Perez Hilton, so I played the T version of Perez Hilton. I played Lindsay Lopez, and I had this pink streak on my hair. I remember going to hair and makeup, and it was my first time in the chair. And they're like, "We're gonna put this streak on you." Is that okay? I was like, "Okay." And they glued it on. Like I, don't, I never heard of this. And then at the end of the day, they're like, "Do you want to just take it off at home and just wash it out?" I was like, "Okay." That was not easily washed out. I really think I pulled some of my scalp off to taking off this like uh, piece. But uh, I remember that being a fun experience. So going into that, had you? Uh, always wanted to be an actor. Uh, were you acting in high school? Like, what led you to landing this this role? Um, I yeah, I always wanted to be an actor. I remember um, always, always. I remember being six years old and watching the Christmas special that was on KTL or something like a free TV station. And I just remember watching Annie at Christmas, and I saw these kids dancing and singing, and they had fun. And I told my mom, I want to be that mom. I want to be an orphan. <laughs> <laughs> And she looked at me. <laughs> and she reacted in what way? Yeah, she Because these are the important moments that yeah. shape who she you said, become. Gay? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I want to be an orphan. And she was like, ¿Qué estás hablando? And I was like, those kids, like, oh, son actores, they're actors. And I was like, oh, well, I want to be an actor. I want to be an actor. And yeah. she said, no, acting's for um, for rich kids, is what she told me. And I was right. like, you have to be rich to act. I was like, those kids are mopping the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, mom, I don't think you're getting it. Orphans don't have money. Um, <laughs> who's the adult? Uh, she literally said, no, you have those kids take classes. Right, and, right, right. and I was like, well, I want to do that. And she goes like, okay, well, you know, you, we don't have money for that. You know, like at this point, single mom, immigrant family. Where you know? were you living? Uh, we were living in Santa Ana. Got to shout uh, it out. Home Santa town. Ana, okay. uh, but not the OC where you watch TV and you're like, I love the OC. No, it's the right. other side of the tracks. Yeah. Where he, yeah, the other guy lived, that's where we lived. And uh, <laughs> she was just working like three jobs trying to make ends meet. And I remember um, asking for, um, I think it was $12.50 for an improv class that we found out that YMCA was doing. And I was like, I want this class. And she was like, nothing else, you know, it's $12.50. That's grocery money and laundry money. And I was just like, well, if I make money, can I take the class? And she said, Mijo, if you can make money, you can do whatever you want. Right. And I was like, Fine, I will. I'm seven. Um, and then I was like, oh, shit, I'm seven. And how am I going to make this money? And we were walking home from school one day, and this guy was in the park uh, collecting uh, trash out of the trash cans. And I was like, what is he doing? He's like, he sells the aluminum the cans yeah, yeah. and the bottles. I'm like, you make money off of that? And she goes like, yeah. I ran into her closet, got a wire hanger, unhooked it, went through trash cans, and I got aluminum cans. It took me two weeks to earn like the $6.25. So yeah. I was halfway there. It took me another two weeks, so a whole month to earn the money. I take the YMCA class, they divide it into groups, like the younger kids, like between ages of five and like eight are in one group and the older kids are together. We It was an hour and a half of improv. They were like, now you're a tiger. And we're like, whoa, now you're a lion. Oh yeah. my God. And acting. nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Yeah, no, the same. Nothing has yeah. changed. Uh, that is the, I just moved up, yeah, yeah. to a higher <laughs> class of that. Uh, so basically, I remember just taking the class and after I was done, it took me a month to earn the money. I just remember thinking, do I really want to fucking do this? Right. It took, I'm like seven years old, like wasting my like summer, like collecting cans. And it smelled and it was gross. And I was like, yeah, 
yeah, I fucking want to do it. And so I kept collecting cans, uh, what, seven, eight. Then I worked at a swap meet to pay for my acting classes. So I was wow. taking like tap and jazz and ballet because I want to do everything. Remember, I want to be an orphan. So you got hooked. Yeah, you want to be an orphan. I want to orphan. So yeah. I was like, those kids dance. All what, orphans do what, musicals. What Annie like did yeah, down the course. staircase with the ball guy. Yeah, like, are you I'm a proper orphan if you can't sing? No, yeah, and, no. I, and I would try to do it by myself with a stranger who was bald and it didn't yeah. work out. <laughs> and they would look at me weird. And I was like, why are they looking at me weird? Haven't you seen Annie? Yeah, and, I, uh, it's always <laughs> interesting talking to actors is because you guys pick a career something speaks to you young and you like pick this career and it's then so later hard. on as you get well and later on as you get older you start realizing okay what this, the fuck's wrong yeah, with this, is, this is not <laughs> this is not what i thought it would be because yeah. then you're like okay well paying the bills actors and... hear more no's in one week than the average person hears in a lifetime right in job reference so yeah. you mm. went for auditions you hear no's after no in one week, most people have about three or four careers in their life span. They'll switch careers or whatever, but they take a break and they go, I did this for 10 years and now I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna and they do it for another five, another 30, and that's it. Actors here know every day. So for everything you see on my IMDB page, you don't see the hundreds, maybe thousands of, of no's of no's that I didn't get. Could you imagine if we did the uh the IMDB <laughs> no's? <laughs> The Harvey, other, how many no's do you have on your IMDb. Let's remember, oh, this one hurt a lot. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that one. I don't know if anyone, it, it, I don't know if anyone no. would have seen us, but like it would be like the other side yeah, of IMDb, exactly. the ones that you didn't get. Right. Yeah. And um, and that's no. always, look at that, because sometimes you are you want something so bad as an actor, like, oh, that was my role. And then you see the way it turns out, like, ah, oh, you know what? Yeah. I'm good. I'm good so at there's. Uh, there's a line in in what we do in the shadows that I laughed quite a bit about where you go uh, ever since you saw um, not interview with the vampire Ant Antonio Barderas interview with the vampire is the first time I saw a Mexican vampire in pop culture uh, which I thought was so so fun especially given you know how Hollywood was making strides to be more inclusive in casting like that um, did you have and who were your was he really your hero growing up Antonio Banderas well, as an actor no I just remember looking for kids who look like me and I didn't you know representation matters obviously Obviously, and I think we are changing, um, obviously, in the right direction. But we have so you know much uh, far to go. But I, I never saw anyone like me. Like I remember growing up and looking for an excuse to say that kid can do it, I can do it, mm -hmm. and I didn't. I remember being you know uh, young and chubby and Mexican, and there was no one like me on television. And I just remember feeling like it wasn't an opportunity. And also a reason why my parents would point that out. You know, they're like, right. that's not a right. world for us. You know, right. that's not a world for us to go into. And I thought that's not fair. So I pride myself in being that kid for someone who's yeah. in, you know, uh, tonight's show and being like, who is that chubby Mexican guy? I can grow up to be that guy. I mean, we should take a second because, you know, your brand new show premieres tomorrow, tonight, 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 tonight. tonight. It's a yeah. big moment. Yeah. Like for someone who's been your first acting role is 2008. Yeah. You stuck with it. You've been working consistently throughout all the years. I mean, you're doing multiple projects every single year. Um, how does your mother feel about this now? She got the LA Times this morning. My yeah. sister picked it up and we're in the cover of the calendar section. I'm right there. Uh, like Ava and I are the blow up picture with, in the like, half of your the hair thing. folded yeah, over like that. Right. <laughs> yeah. And my sister videotaped it. And so like she showed it to her folded. So she opens it and she opened it up. And then my sister was filming her and she looked up and she started crying. Oh. Like, such like a complete full circle where it was like she I remember her telling me you know if you want something go get it and now she's opening the, the LA Times and she's crying because her son's on the cover of the calendar section and how does that feel for you knowing that like I, I know acting is not an easy gig I know that the amount of no's you get is just not fun yeah um how does it feel right now to know that you not only because you've seen the first four episodes it's good it's not like you've just done another yeah. project. This is a special project. It's going to be really popular. Yeah. FX really crushed it with this, as did everyone involved, cast and crew. Um, how does it feel right now? I feel surreal. Like I, like you said, I've been working since like 2008, but you know, I've done series regulars and other shows. But this is the first show where I really feel the foundation. Everything's perfect. FX has been so generous and so wonderful with us. Ty Kitch, I mean, the creative team, Paul, like everyone, Scott Rudin, like just everyone it's just it's just a perfect match and i've never felt so comfortable with the show that sometimes i feel like <laughs> you, you start hyperventilating because like it's so good it's so good it's, right, it's just right, so good right. um and i sometimes you get distracted because you do shows and you want it to be successful so you convince yourself like i've done movies or shows in the past like yeah it's good yeah you know it's good. <laughs> and people are like no you know it's not no it is <laughs> and you like talk yourself into it this is the first time i've 
had to like not do that. Right. I just, I know that it's good. So I feel proud of it. So whatever the outcome is, I feel proud of the 10 episodes that we shot and I know that people are going to receive it well, but I, if, even if it didn't go that way, I feel proud of it. I feel so right. proud. I mean, we do show. this a lot. People are going to receive this well. I think FX did an amazing job so picking great. up the show uh, and all the masterminds who are involved in it. It's just a very fun, great show that also, I also enjoy, I found myself, I didn't have to watch all the episodes before meeting you, right? I, right. Actually had, I found myself actually wanting to see what happens there. Yeah. <laughs> going yeah. Just because it's so easy. Yeah, I and, think we have like amazing editors because I wouldn't want that job. The editing for this. Uh, show, unbelievable. Yeah, so because much you footage, have too much good too stuff. Too much good stuff, right. yeah. yeah. And I feel like, wow, they, kudos to you guys because this is a hard job just to edit this show because we have such good stuff and I wish everyone could see everything that we shoot, but that's not possible. But you will hopefully down the line with like special, you know, uh, perks. Blu-ray edition and, stuff. Yeah, the Blu-ray edition. But I'm I, this is the first show that I've ever felt so, and I've worked on great shows in the past. I've great with great writers and great producers. But this is the first time that I felt like, oh, this is such a good show. Like it's yeah. so great and I can't wait for everyone to see it. Well, there have been comments in the chat about some of your other stuff too. Uh, first of all, I think a show that you, your first leading role not too soon after your first started acting, Huge. Um, mm -hmm. A guy in the chat has brought it up a couple times. So Huge, uh, I actually don't really, I didn't watch the show, it's on ABC Family though. <laughs> Funny, heartbreaking and provocative. Huge mm -hmm. follows the lives of 17s and the staff of a weight loss class. Um, so, you know, speaking again of like sort of representation on TV, uh, you know, a bo body positive show like this in 2010 is also, I'm sure, highly impactful for people. Uh, again, it's been brought up in the chat a couple times. Um, so what was it like to get to work on, on this show? That was my first uh, lead and a first yeah. regular on a show. And it was uh, my first platform. And it was so cool because uh, it's based on a book uh, by Sasha Paley and uh, Savannah Dooley and Winnie Holzman. Winnie Holzman, who wrote uh, My So-Called Life. And she wrote the script to Wicked, the musical, which I was a big oh, fan of. So nice. I was yeah. oh, Winnie Holzman. Yeah, yeah. And she's the <laughs> nicest person in the world. She's like a fairy godmother. And she has a voice like a fairy grand she's like we're gonna do this scene like this you know and literally that's back <laughs> my dad too no, <laughs> That is her voice, and I could hear her talk forever. That was my first major thing, and I remember being on set and being so nervous because I, I'd never done the series regular. I'd never done this, and I just remember they were so supportive, and that and the message was so great. And actually, I was playing later on. You find out by watching the show, but I was told ahead of time, "Is he okay? He will be playing the first uh, trans teen character on television." I'm not trans, so I felt like already, like I was like, ah, mm -hmm. I feel weird, you know, it's like, no, no, but it's the pre, like right before, you know, even that idea and thought. So the season ends with him questioning that in his head. Mm -hmm. So we never have to like completely, you know, transfer over right. to like, yeah, I'm trans. Like it's never that fully blown up. But I remember knowing that and being like, whoa, this is deep. Like right. this is like for kids. This and this 2010. Is yeah, yeah, this is 2010. Yeah, 2010 and we were, on ABC Family. On ABC right? Family, a new kind of family was their catchphrase. Uh -huh. And now it's freeform. <laughs> and I was like, well, this is a really new kind of family, you know? Because I mean, we had kids who are dealing with weight issues and kids who are dealing with like, I think I'm trans, you know? Mm -hmm. they These are real issues. And I was like, so my hat went off to like, you know, Savannah and, and um, Winnie who was who were making this show in 2010, way ahead of its time. Yeah, wow. And so kudos to them. It's one of my best memories. It's like working with people. I'm friends with them. They're coming tonight to celebrate, like, you know, a lot of the cast members, and I'm still friends with them today. So you make friends for life. That's amazing. Uh, and, and quickly after that, I mean, you again, we talk about all the roles you do. You become a, a regular... Uh, a regular sight to see on on Disney TV shows, right? You do uh, what was that? I or I Zombie, right? Or Nickelodeon. oh yeah, no. uh, you're talking about Nickelodeon shows. Nickelodeon, sorry, Nickelodeon yeah, shows. Yes, uh, yeah, that was uh, a. I went in for a one day guest star uh, or co star for two lines, and at first I had just finished the internship with Vince Vaughn, Owen Wilson, yep. and so I was on this like high roll. Like I was like, yes, we have opportunities, and this is great. This is great for my career. And then this came up, and my I remember my manager at the time was like, mm, it's two lines pass. It's beneath you, and I was like, whoa, I collect a cans. Uh -huh. You know, yeah, I collect yeah, cans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not above anything. So uh, yeah, that'll, that'll change. <laughs> that'll change. <laughs> like, I was like, I was like, I'm not above going in for this I was like because I asked questions I was like who is this character it's their first season uh, it's a family they're at a funeral and he's a cousin and I was like oh so he's a family member he's like yeah but it's a one day two line don't do it and I said no he's family and family never goes away like family never goes away and so like I went in I auditioned got the part I shot the actual episode T three weeks later uh, Jet the creator had written an episode revolving around me 
well. Like he wrote it. And so I recurred on that show for four seasons because of a two, a one day two line guest star that was supposed to happen. And I almost didn't go because they were like, nah, it's two lines. I was like, you never know where those two lines are going to go. And because I was doing that show while I was doing that, I auditioned for eye candy and right. they let me go do eye candy. And I did a whole season of eye candy as a series regular. That show got canceled and I came back and Thundermans was still going on. And they're like, welcome back. <laughs> Yo, your, your life is hectic. <laughs> this is a hectic level. Of juice. You got to look up for my uh, autobiography coming yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out. <laughs> um, the internship. Um, I remember this movie fondly. Uh, two great actors, Vince Vaughn um, and Owen Wilson. Yeah, another um, role I wasn't supposed to do. What do you mean? I went in for a role that I knew wasn't right for me. And Sean, uh, who's the writer and the director uh, who created um, Stranger Things, yeah. Uh, yeah, he literally, I went in he was laughing on the floor. I went in and I said, this is how I would do this character. I know it's not me, but I would do it like this. He's laughing on the floor. We both know it's not would my character. Would you do some character differently? Um, well, I just do the way I think the character would, if I played it, would be played. Bold you know? move, Yeah, right? and I was like, I do it. Yeah. And you know what, because I knew at that point the character was very specific on description, physicality, and it wasn't me. You know, so I was like, that's not me, but I'm going to do it like me. So yeah. here it is, boom. And then I did it, and he was laughing on the floor. I exited, and then I went to shoot this other uh, indie film in New Orleans. And while I was there, they called and said, hey, Sean has written a part for you in the film. Wow. So the part didn't yeah. exist. And so he wrote a part. I was like, cool. He's like, it's only two lines. Again, the two lines. And I was like, it's only two lines. Like, great. I'll just go and shoot that in Atlanta in one day, come back and finish this film. No, no. Sean wants you there for three months. And I was like, for (laughs) For two two lines? lines? He's like, yeah, you're in the villain team, but you're the only nice guy in the villain team. And I was like, so you're in every scene. So in the movie, you see me throughout the movie because we shot for three months. And then I get my two lines at the end of the movie. (laughs) When I punch him in the gut. Max Manhella, I punch him and then I take my, uh, you know, vengeance on him. Is that quite. Diff- this is a bizarre thing, right? Because you have two lines, but you're kind of like an extra in the group. Kinda, yeah. to- was that a weird thing to say yes to, or did you just see that? What, what do you do at that? Point? Uh, well, I saw it as such like a when they said they wrote it for me. I was like, that's so cool. You don't have to do that. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. definitely going to do it, and I would bend over backwards to well, do I it. I mean, what writing? Two lines. Right, two lines. Right. <laughs> but also, you know, this is a, a international film. Yep. I've never done anything like this. The exposure would be amazing. Yep. So you have to look I mean, at all Vince those things. Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson. It's right? Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson, yeah. you know? It's like, oh, oh all right. You know, and who's oh, someone yeah. that you shed a lot of, if I remember correctly, Max Minghella, uh is kind of, he's mean to you. Yeah. The he's the leader of the villain yeah. squad. Yeah. And he's mean to you the right. entire time until the very end. Until I punch him. And <laughs> now look at him. Uh, Ham it's hell. Yeah. Do you watch it? Yeah. Um, I just uh, talked to him when I was shooting this show in Toronto. He was in Toronto shooting something. It was, uh, I think it might have been Pickups for Handmaid's Tale or something. Okay. Um, but he was uh, at the airport and I didn't text him and blah, blah. But uh, yeah, I, you never know who you're going to meet. You know is what that mean? what it is? <laughs> you never know who you're going to meet. Like I'm literally a two line, you know, supposed to be not in this movie. They write it in. Then you make friends and you meet amazing people. And you never know where your life's going to lead where going in for something and saying yes. It's yes and. The year of yes. And how does a show <laughs> like what you're on right now what we do in the shadows change an actor's life. Well, the I, billboards are everywhere. The billboards are everywhere. That. I mean, today's the first day of the first episode. Okay. So I, this is a conversation. I guess we could have like uh, four episodes in. Well, I mean, but, um, that's fine if this is your first time to the rodeo, but you've yeah. been here before. So oh, what? but I see the difference. You mean? Go like, on, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I see the difference. And like, like again, like FX did such a great job with marketing. Like I've never seen my mouth that big, you know. <laughs> and I was, I was driving on Wilshire, and it was the side of a medical building. And it was my mouth and everyone else's mouth. And you know, everyone's a vampire, and I'm not. So I had the fake yeah, green yeah, fangs. Fake teeth, yeah. And so I was like, wow, my mouth's so huge, and that's my mouth. And people have <laughs> taking pictures around town with like uh, bus stops and Uh billboards and they're like look whose mouth I found and I'm like wow my mouth's everywhere and it's just so surreal because I've never done anything where it's that caliber of like you know promoting or that I've been a part of the poster you know like I've been a lead on shows but it's been like the one lead on the the poster and they're they're at the forefront because they're the 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 main it's just so important to this, the show. Yeah, the story. You're the only human. Yeah. You're, you're our connection to this weird world. Right. Um, how do you think life on an outside level? I mean, look, you've grown up in LA. You've been in this business. You do wine and cheese nights and get acting roles. <laughs> I mean, that's it. Uh, what, how does your life change in that way? What changes? Um, I think I've noticed it a little bit. I've noticed that recently since the show's about you've to You've got to get rid today. of the other friends. You know, the friends that you've been with you for a long no, time. No, <laughs> you know, it's so funny that I have friends here today who now who uh, went through their whole, like, you know, profession doing makeup and hair and yeah. whatever they did. And now they're my, like, hair and makeup people. Yes. Like, I work with my friends. I went to school. Adriana's here. And she did my hair today because she's amazing. And she went to school for it. And we grew up up since we were in seventh grade I love and that. so I like working with the people that were with me we came up together and so like I literally you know called her I was like hey we're doing all this stuff and she's an amazing hairstylist and I was like 
what are the odds that we both went to, you know, grew up together, we're doing what we love, and we're working together. That's so, so cool. That's so cool. Yeah. So I love that. But yeah, I noticed the difference now recently, like, you know, I'm taking meetings now. Uh-huh. Like, people are reaching out to take <laughs> right, so bring that down. I, I find this so, part of the industry so Yeah, all, all, all of a sudden. The, behind the veil. All of a so. sudden, when the poster's up around town, people are like, well, yeah, let's have a meeting with that guy, you know? Who's those people? Like, like directors okay. or, like, people who want to take a meeting. All of a sudden, they're like, oh, that's so cool. Wait, but you knew about him before. Yeah, 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 I knew about you. But I saw your mouth. I saw your mouth, and I said, "I gotta meet that mouth." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and that's that's been different. So I've your dating life must be through the roof as well. <laughs> <laughs> and I have time for it. Yeah, right. I literally don't have time for literally to go on it. Like it's that bad. It's like it's been busy for the last three weeks. We premiered the show in South by Southwest. Yeah. And it's been like a roller coaster. It's been like nonstop. We premiered in New York, and then tonight we're having you know, uh, friends are getting together. My friend put this thing together tonight to like have a screening with the East Coast live. Okay, okay. And so we're oh, doing nice. like a yeah. at a bar, and like it'll be fun. So I'm really excited. So uh, it'll be. Good. That's awesome. So for people just joining here, this is the I'm Debut Show Live. I'm Ian Borja. With me as always, Tim Cash, and our special guest, Harvey Guillen. We're talking what we do in the shadows and his awesome career. Uh, we have 15 minutes left on the show, folks. So throw in some questions here uh, that we can ask Harvey at the end. There's some questions in the chat we already got that I kind of, the conversation, your story was so interesting. I didn't want to stop it. Uh, first of all, No Feet asks, will FX make what we do in the shadows available for streaming on Hulu? Do you know this answer? Um, I don't, but I know that we are streaming or we're going to be available in other countries already. Like we're in BBC okay. two in the UK. So we, you can watch it, I think the day after or maybe a couple hours after. And I know that, uh, other stations around the world have already, um, are showing it like hours after we air. So if you can get it in other countries, I'm sure that they'll make yeah. it available for streaming. Cool. That, yeah. Uh, our dear friend, hate your heroes asks, what's your favorite mockumentary? Very relevant question. Good question. Oh, wow. Um, well, I mean, obviously I have to say shadows because I'm <laughs> now, but if I didn't have to do a vampire docu- uh, mockumentary, uh, waiting for Guffman. No, yeah. Okay. Yes. Harvey. Right. We just became best friends. I, <laughs> so everyone, so waiting for Guffman is, uh, the Christopher guest, the guys who do Me. spinal tap, best in show. Everyone yeah. talks about Spinal Tap and Besson Show, Wait, but Winnie for Guffman is absolutely his number one. That's number one for me. Maybe his number one, but the best one commentary ever is The Office. Oh, well, yeah. the, table, I, the no, TV no, show is fantastic. I was actually just re-watching it yesterday. I, I think that fits They me. all hold up. Like, yeah, I'm not going to – It's, like oh, yeah, a, it's, a, it it's a real Sophie's yeah. choice, you know? Yeah. Sophie was this uh, bakery down the street for me that always had three options for good, so <laughs> – Stop. <laughs> uh, Stop. Let's see in the chat. So people didn't know Waiting for Guffman. Again, I, if you're a fan of Christopher Guest, that's his best one, hands down. But The Office also. Do you have a favorite Office episode, Tim? I don't know if I've asked you this before. Uh, favorite Office uh, – God, there are so many. I don't even know. I don't, I'll, let me think about that for a second. It's definitely something with Dwight Shrew, and it's definitely. So, by the way, very. Mine's si- a favorite with Mark because Mark's in the office. Yes, he is. Yeah, he is. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Dwight. Shout out to Mark. He's Dwight's like assistant, right? In in some of them. Uh, question from. Hey, by the way, was he not meant to be an actor? So I think I remember he was like got an brought actress. On... I don't think it was meant to be no, an, an actor. What I mean is, I think he got brought on to literally be a computer guy. You ask him about this. Apparently, oh yeah, he did. He wasn't doing tech. acting. He wasn't before. doing acting. He and was they brought doing, him on board, and he um, built a career. Yeah, he basically got asked by the office because he was doing. Um, no, he didn't want anyone to know he was doing this character on local TV where he uh, he was a yo-yo instructor. Yeah, okay. and he did it as a bit, and the bit like people found out like that guy's an actor. He has to be because of the the character. People were like, "How is this guy on television?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, people called him up, and it was the office, and the office called him and actually asked him to be part of the show. Yeah, because he that wasn't his thing. No, I think he, he did a, like um. He might have done stand-up. I've seen him. He did stand-up in Toronto. He does uh, stand-up really well, and I think he was doing it low-key on the side. It wasn't, like, his main hobby, and he never saw it as, like, a full thing. But he's so hilarious. Like, it's, it was, like, it was only a matter of time. It's also strange to him watching your new show at how, um, how much fans of horror films the creators are in the way that the attention they give to the actual vampires and the transformations and the look. Yeah. They haven't... Um, it's literally a high budget movie value of makeup and prosthetics on like the Baron and like the different right. things that you don't expect. Uh, yeah. I'm like, wait, they, they take this really seriously no. because it's meant to be real. Yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. The detail is insane. I was just watching a video for the first day in production where in the costume room, they had all the vampires outfits, the uh, inspirations yeah. and they're detailed and beautiful. And it's like over the wall and it's like covered with pictures. And then you get to Guillermo and it's just one sweater picture pin. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, uh, I'm not gonna spoil it. the 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 gift you receive from Nando is so so funny on like your anniversary. Nandor? <laughs> yeah, I'm like Nandor, you're, the the gift you receive. Uh, oh god, it's so so good. Uh, other questions in here. 
A uh, huge fan of the sci-fi show The Magicians. Um, that, oh. that is a big cult following show. Uh, do you have a favorite story from working on that? Yeah, so The Magicians, another funny story. I was shooting a film in Vancouver, and I, they were seeing people in L.A. for that role, and I wanted to go in. I was like, yeah, I want to go in, but I, I am, I'm here. Can I send a tape? Like, yeah, they'll send, you can send a tape. They'll take it. And at the last minute, the casting in L.A. said, uh, we already have options, and it's tomorrow. We'll get him something else, and you think he's too young for the role. And I was like, but I already learned my lines and everything. And I was like, but it shoots in, in uh, Vancouver. And they were like, no, it's fine. We'll get you the next time. And I was just, like, resilient, going back to, like, you know, what I admire about Taika and just, like, tenacity. And I was like, no, if it's a SAG production, they have a casting office in Vancouver. I can go to the office in Vancouver and put myself on tape there. And they call the office in Vancouver and they're like, hey, can Harvey come in? He's like, yeah, we'd love to meet him. We don't even know him because there's two different offices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I go into the Vancouver office without the LA office knowing and I book it. <laughs> and they tell they have to tell the LA office, he booked it. He's in he's in Vancouver. And it was literally like supposed to be a one episode thing. And um, he's, he's out of the book. So out of the trilogy, uh, Benedict Pickwick. Um, what so, a name also. Yeah. And I re the, working on the show, the best episode, or my favorite episode, unfortunately, is when um, we really deal with uh, his true emotions. He's always has it perfect, and he has a, he's a map maker, and everything's precise, and he's like proper and polite. And then um, there's an episode where he, the, this key that you hold shows your true emotions and what you're really feeling, and we don't talk about emotions and um, you know suicide and whatnot, and it just shows he comes undone. And it was really um, interesting for me to play because the character, everyone has seen him as like smiley and perfect and like always uh, polite and whatnot, and then when the key is on his hand it's a different person and people are like who are you and then he jumps off the ship and gets eaten by a dragon because he literally kills himself <laughs> spoiler <laughs> um but that's a fan who watches the show so they already know so this one's go, for you cuts. this is for you there is absolutely no trivia on what we do in the shadows that's I'm, surprising so, well not anymore we've no. got enough stuff from you is there one thing wow great rating by the way as well yeah um what is one thing that the world what's a great piece of trivia about what we do in the shadows something that only you know um something that only i know maybe the way that directors work maybe the Ooh, way, yeah, go ahead um that in the pilot uh there was a scene that was shot towards the end of shooting we shot the pilot in la and that was uh, early 2018 and we shot the rest of the series in toronto but unbeknownst to the audience there's uh like two scenes in the pilot that were added later, they were shot in Toronto, but you'll never know. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's up to you to figure out where those uh, nuggets are. Um, a great okay. thing here that I don't want to give any spoilers, but one thing everyone should be looking forward to is uh, the amazing amount of guest stars that are going to be stepping on this. And that has got to do a lot with uh, the original movie, but also Taika Waititi and uh, Jermaine Clement. Yeah, um, that's a phone call away. That's like, it's like, oh, we're going to get this person. Right? Wow, I'm calling them right now. And it's like, oh. Uh, we asked you this actually at the South by World premiere, but do you have a uh, dream cameos to come on as vampires? Yeah. I mean, I have like two I, for comedy comedy. I would want like Amy Sedaris. Cause okay. I think she'd be hilarious and I love her, um, in everything she does. And I think Antonio Banderas would be, that's just that's the, yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, it would have to be like, can you imagine Guillermo like seeing Antonio Banderas? What's like, your favorite <laughs> vampire movie? The, actually, first of all, I actually, were you into vampires at any point in your I life? I was country? actually for this a while. This is very vampire. This is very, <laughs> very This vampire. is my own. Uh, I wanted to announce by it today. Zara. I'm, 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 I'm getting my vampire collection out, and this is my first piece. All right, so. congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, uh, we're in stores nowhere right now, yeah, yeah. and we're hoping to get picked up. Hot topic. Hot topic. Um, but go on. Were you ever oh, a fan I, of vampires? Oh, uh, I was fans. I, I was a fan of the, the vampire genre. I, I remember watching Interview with the Vampire, okay. um, mm. which uh, just made me want to kind of go more into acting. I thought it was so cool. And I also thought um, Kristen, like, you know, was so good as an, as a, in as Twilight. A, no, no, she was You're a Twilight about... actress. Uh, in, oh, in in Kristen, yeah, 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 of course, yeah. And uh, she was so cool. And I thought she was so like great as an actress. And she was like nine years old when she did that. And she, yeah. and she doesn't die. Like she keeps, you know, she cuts her hair yeah, and yeah, yeah. like magic. Uh, I remember that was one of my favorites. And I just Kristen Dunst. Uh, Kristen Dunst, uh, Dunst uh, yeah. Yeah, her scenes with Brad Pitt yeah. and that are just brilliant. Why did you make me? Like those yeah. were like, whoa, she's like yeah. teaching like kids how to act. You know? She cuts her hair off and then it's And it grows like, back yeah. and I was like, whoa. And that was like high tech, like CG. You know what I mean? Like uh -huh, back then like, sure. I was like, that's really cool. So I, that was my favorite. Ironically. Only movie that Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise ever did together. Huh. Weird. I Weird. always thought that they should have done more. And it's the number one movie. It's, I, I would want nothing more. That movie, I just recently rewatched it a couple months ago. 
it still holds up as being completely insane and totally awesome at the same time. It yeah, such a, I've gone such to the a... plantation where they shoot when the when it burns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've yeah, gone yeah. to that one and they like they advertise it. And this is where Brad Pitt and you know I'm just. But like... I, a lot of what we do in the shadows, I think that original kind of the aesthetic, the Antonio Banderas look, especially when they go down and meet kind of like the circus performing vampires yeah. in the bottom, has a lot to do with Taika's influence. He definitely. Yeah. Saw oh, absolutely. That. Yeah, yeah, it. We may or may not have a wink to that For at some point in the season. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Uh, there was a question in That's chat. That's the best film, by the way. Vampire yeah, absolutely. Movie. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, hands down. Uh, Old voice. Reed, Reed H. Cooper, who is a who's a he's a good dear friend of the IMDb Twitch stream, and he's a he's a big fan of yours. He said um, he wants to know what was it like being uh, as an out actor, and like how that has like as you've grown up in the industry and you've talked about representation has been very important, uh, you know, whether it's being a Latino actor or something like that, how has that affected your career in terms of choosing roles and, and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, I feel like uh, being, you know, I've, going into the business, I already had a lot of strikes against me, especially when I started in 2008, you literally- what, you what strikes? I feel like you had strikes like, if you weren't tall and Adonis, if you weren't blonde and blue eyed, if you weren't uh, fit, you know what I mean? Like right. or firm or whatever. Um, it For me, like I, I went into it like knowing that these things were already going to be putting me in a box. And so I made it a goal to not let those things that make me and I'm really proud of who I am and what I where I come from and the person that I am and uh, my sexuality and like everything I'm really proud of. So I didn't want to have to sacrifice those things to play roles because they weren't in the image of someone else. And so I'm, I pride myself in looking back at my IMDb page and saying that everything I've done, whether it's a hetero role or it's a bi role or a pansexual role, everything uh, across the table, I've never sacrificed being who I am to play those parts. So I've always brought a little bit of me into everything that I do. Because um, sometimes I'm like, people are like, oh, you're not thinking like your character. People think they see Guillermo and they're like, you're going to be quiet and submit. And that's right, Guillermo. Right, right, like, right, I'm right, not right. that character. Yeah. Yeah. And people are like, it's called acting, you know? <laughs> and and I think as an actor, we should never be um, put into boxes just because uh, of your personal life or, the, or your appearance. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. It's like, if you're an actor and you're a good actor, you can play the part. And that's why I'm always convinced that if you're right for the part and you can play the part, then you should play it. It doesn't matter what your uh, life story is. It doesn't matter what your sexual preference is, your uh, ethnicity, without going like, you know, Mickey Rooney and like sure. Breakfast at Tiffany's. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like we're not doing that. But if you could play it, then like you know, stand up and represent. That's what I always say. Nice. You need to write a book or do a speaking tour of your story. <laughs> He's busy. Like, Court to his agent. Yeah. <laughs> my PR is out there. Court, is, we uh, gotta do a speaking my tour. Fi my <laughs> final question, just teasing for the show that I can't wait to see the rest of it, is what do you enjoy and what do you love the most about playing Guillermo? The thing I love the most about Guillermo is um, – He's so, um, I think what everyone has inside of them, that um, endearness, that uh, uh, that you really want the best for everyone and help everyone else by getting your your agenda across. Like you, some people stum stumble over people all the time to get what they want, but I feel like Guillermo is playing by the rules. And I feel like if everyone played by the rules, we can help each other. It's like, you know, tit for tat, I help you, you help me, but it doesn't work out that way. So I the really, dear thing I love about Guillermo is that he's so sweet and endearing and sometimes I forget that because Harvey is sometimes not that because I'm <laughs> just like punching to get to the next level you know I'm like trying to collect those cans trying to get to the next level yeah right. and Guillermo would never do that Guillermo has literally signed up to play something that um it took 10 years to get this far because someone said I promise you that and a word goes a long way with Guillermo and sometimes a word doesn't go a long way in this industry right, you know that's true. so I do admire that about him and I gotta take from him sometimes and be like remember to be more like Guillermo sometimes and uh, enjoy the moment. <laughs> so, so what's next for you? I mean, you're going to be a comedy star after after the show. Again, I'm not just saying that. I like you can ask people who were sitting next to me at my desk when I was watching it. They were like telling me to stop laughing because I was laughing too hard watching the show. <laughs> uh, what, what's next for you? Uh, you have one post production credit. I'm trying to pull it up right now. I, I, I guess in remember. general, like you're at that yeah. place now where that you've always dreamed of. Yeah. You know what I mean? You've got a show yeah. where you said it before. You've been in shows where you haven't been. You've had to fake it. Yeah. This one you can truly be proud of. Yeah. You're truly on it. You're a main star. You're on the billboards. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. So then in you know, you have to go back to that strategy, right? Of picking this career and wanting to keep 
working and getting better, what's that next? How do you elevate from here? Well, I'm writing, uh, my writing partner, Jamie Holt, um, we're creating content. Right? For so long, Ooh. when you, my, uh, we're just waiting for someone, you know, you're waiting for the next gig sometimes that I stopped doing that a couple years ago. I was like, I'm not waiting for the next gig. I want to create content for me and my friends to actually be able to be a, a part of. So we actually have something in development now. Um, uh -oh, talk too much about okay. it. Um, Secrets. You know, I just shot something else as a guest star as well. We can't talk about too. I know Courtney's out there like, don't talk about yeah, that. Yeah. Um, can't announce. Uh, <laughs> I can is, have Courtney yeah. escorted from the building. If yeah, you yeah. Yeah. Help. No, sure. Get her out of here um, real quick. Cannot. Um, but, but this is a tease, like what genre then where are we going is it gonna be comedy um, is it's it? gonna be one of them is uh it's gonna be an anthology yeah. and uh it's great you're gonna love it uh the script is uh basically uh about uh immigrant families and their american dream and so you can look forward to that uh i can give too much about it but it's a great script and you're really gonna love it you can look love forward that. to it soon yeah i would i actually I always enjoy seeing people that comedy comes so natural uh, to them. I love seeing them sometimes do real dramatic stuff. Yeah, and people are always surprised. I have people from FX come up and they're like, we knew you were funny because obviously, but we had some episodes where, you know, he's a human. He's yeah, the yeah, one who's carrying yeah, the emotion. Yeah, right. And so sometimes you're like, oh my God. And so people were coming up to me and be like, that episode eight. Right. Whew. And I was right. like, oh, thank you. And it's like, I didn't know you could. Well, I mean, I knew you could do I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, actors are, uh, you know, multi-talented guys. Yeah, man. <laughs> Well, uh, Harvey, thank you so much. Uh, again, everyone in the chat who's been hanging out. What we do in the shadows premieres tonight on FX and tomorrow, right? You said in BBC Two, and it'll be all international, over. Yeah. all over, so you can watch it. Uh, again, I think it's I think it's better than the movie. I saw four episodes, hilarious, hilarious. Make sure you go watch it. Uh, Tim and Harvey, you can follow them on Inst you guys like what, Instagram, Twitter folk, Harvey, right? Yeah, there on the name at right? Harvey Gian on Twitter and Instagram. Follow me and say hi. Good I luck spelling that. And Tim, who do you have coming on the IMDb show uh, later this week? Cool. Uh, the next episode, I believe, is Chad Michael Murray, who is the newest addition to the Riverdale cast. Uh, we did a great sit down with him and uh, check it out. IMDb.com slash show. Awesome. Well, Tim, Harvey, thank you so much. Ton of fun. Best of luck with the rest of the show. I hope we get many more seasons to come as well. Uh, and everyone in the chat, thanks for hanging out. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks, Thank you, Ian. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Yep. Bye.